Hi there, welcome to the intro to iProps tutorial. There are a bunch of new iProps in iClone 5, so I'll give you the rundown on how to use them and a couple of other cool tips as well. iProps are basically props that are pre-programmed using Lua to interact with various on-screen objects. First off, to find the iProps, you'll want to go to the Set section and open the Props menu. Here you'll find a couple of iProp categories. The outdoor props are new with iClone 5 and have some especially cool features, including a control panel. I'm going to drag in the bike first. If I right click on the bike, I can toggle the control panel at the top left on or off. The first thing I want to do though is choose Select Actor and then select Chuck here. You'll see that Chuck will automatically sit on the bike with his hands and feet attached to the handlebars and pedals. When it imports, you'll see a hollow green arrow on the bottom indicating the direction it will travel. If you want to turn this or any other dummy prop off, simply press Ctrl D. We'll operate the bike in a moment, but first I want to switch to the follow actor camera view so we can get a video game like feeling to the movement. When I click the driving button, you'll see my character inch forward slowly due to the speed setting in the control panel. If I bring that up, you'll see that my bike will start moving a lot quicker. Likewise, I can adjust the rotate slider to change the direction of the bike. Notice that my character will move along with the bike naturally using human IK, just like I'm playing a video game. This is what it looks like from the preview camera. Now, if I delete the bike, the character will disappear and be restored to the T-pose back at his original position. I can also right-click the bike and select Release Actor. If I want to get him back to the normal pose, I can go into the Motion Key Editor and simply select Default to bring my character back. Next, I'll bring in the horizontal bar. On this prop, you can hang a character from the higher bar to do a sort of pull-up. Let's bring in Gwyn for this and see how she does. I just need to go through the same menu options in the horizontal bar, and then select Gwyn. When I do, she'll get right into position, hanging from the high bar. When I select Apply, she'll begin to do pull-ups at a regular pace. If I increase the slider number, she'll continue to get faster and faster. Seems like she might be getting a little tired, so let's delete the bars and move on. Again, you can open the motion layer editor by using Shift F3 and returning to the default pose. Okay, so let's put Chuck on the merry-go-round next. Again, you can use the same menu items and Chuck will get into position on the merry-go-round. If the strength is zero, nothing will happen when I press the apply button, so I need to put that up a little bit. Every time I press the apply button now, we'll give the merry-go-round a push, and it will eventually slow down and stop, unless I continue pushing. I'll put the strength up a bit, and you can see a more powerful push this time. If you set it to auto, however, the merry-go-round will continue to spin without any user input. You can slow down the spin with auto applied as well. The next eye prop up is the seesaw, which is a two-character interactive prop. With this prop, you can have the option to choose a character for both position A and position B, as you see me doing here. Once your characters are seated, you can press the down arrow on either side to push that side of the seesaw down. If I put on the auto, you'll see now that there will be continual pushing on that side of the seesaw. Notice how the character's legs bend and make contact with the ground naturally. The second last new eye prop I'm going to show you is the swinging bench, which is also suitable for two characters. Be aware that with this eye prop, you'll want to select a male character for position A, as that position will naturally pose the character in a male pose, as you can see here when I select Chuck. You'll see that when I select Gwyn, her pose is notably more feminine. 
Again, similar to the other eye props, I can manipulate the movement using the dedicated control panel at the top. Each arrow button will push the eye prop in a different way. If I toggle on the auto, the lovely couple will just continue swinging on their bench swing in the nice park together. Finally, we'll get Chuck to demonstrate the unicycle eye prop. Using the same procedure as with the bike, I can mount Chuck on top of the unicycle. Who knew he had such good balance? Use the same procedure as with the bike to propel him along at a good speed. If you want a better view of your live recording, you can also use the bird's eye view camera, which I'm selecting here. This will follow your character along as he happily unicycles through the grass. You can also apply other animations to your characters while they're interacting with props as well. I can open the motion puppet panel here, and as long as I mask out my character's legs, I can apply any motion I want to the top part of his body. If he was doing a performance, he might be talking and gesturing to the crowd, so I'm going to apply and record this explain motion. You can see now that as he bikes around the grass, his arms will be doing a completely separate motion that I layered on top. If you want to know more about iProps and how to customize them, stay tuned for our more advanced tutorials on how to customize your own iProps using Lua templates provided by Reallusion.